Hi, in this session, we will learn about actors which are fundamental components used to represent visual elements in a 3D scene. An actor in VTK represents an object or a visual element that can be rendered in a 3D scene. It can represent geometric shapes, polygonal models, volumes, text, or any other visual element. Each actor has properties and attributes that define its appearance and behavior in the scene. Properties include color, opacity, visibility, position, orientation, scale, shading, and lighting parameters. An actor is associated with a mapper that converts geometric data or input data into rendering primitives for display. The mapper is responsible for transforming the actor's data into a format suitable for rendering by the graphics hardware. Actors are rendered by VTK's rendering pipeline, which includes stages such as geometry processing, shader application, rasterization, and display on the screen. Actor is a polygonal object, which is a type of geometric representation used in computer graphics and computational geometry to describe the shape of 3D objects. It consists of vertices, edges, and faces that form polygons, such as triangles or quadrilaterals, to approximate the surface of an object. Polygonal meshes approximate smooth surfaces by dividing them into small flat facets. The level of detail and accuracy depends on the density of vertices and faces. Actors can be transformed using translation, rotation, and scaling operations to position them in the scene and adjust their appearance. An actor's location and orientation in space are controlled using transformation matrices. Each actor has a transformation matrix associated with it. To move an actor to a specific location in space, you modify its transformation matrix by setting the translation components. We can apply rotations around different axes by setting appropriate rotation angles in the matrix elements. Scaling an actor changes its size in the scene. This is achieved by modifying the scaling components of the transformation matrix. Now, we will take an example where we create a disk and translate it along Z axis. To create the disk, we use VTK Disk Source class and set its geometric parameters. Then, we create a transformation object called Disk Transform using VTK Transform class, which translates the object 100 units along the Z axis using translate method. Next, we apply this transformation to a polygonal dataset using VTK Transform Polydata filter. This filter takes the output of a poly data source generating polygonal data using set input connection method. Then, using set transform method, transformation object is applied to the filter. Finally, we use a VTK Polydata mapper to map the transformed data into graphics primitives suitable for rendering. The mapper takes the output of the transform filter as its input, ensuring that the transformed object is ready to be visualized in the scene. Let's run the script and see the output. VTK Polydata is a fundamental data structure, which is used to represent geometry in 3D graphics. It can store points, vertices, lines, polygons, and other types of geometric primitives. It stores attributes or data associated with points and cells, which include scalar values, vectors, normals, texture coordinates, or any custom data we want to attach to the geometry. Scalar data is single value associated with points or cells, such as temperature, density, or elevation, whereas vectors represent velocities, forces, or gradients. VTK Poly Data Mapper class is responsible for converting geometric data, represented by VTK Poly Data, into rendering primitives that can be displayed in a 3D scene. The mapper takes VTK Poly Data as its input, 
and then converts the input into rendering primitives, such as points, lines, or polygons based on the topology of the data. It also handles transforming the coordinates of the poly data from its internal coordinate system to the coordinate system of the renderer. This includes transformations such as translation, rotation, and scaling. The mapper optimizes rendering performance by processing and organizing the poly data efficiently for rendering. It is used as part of a rendering pipeline where it interacts with other components such as actors, renderers, cameras, and interactors to create a complete 3D visualization scene. Now, we create a simple polygonal object from bottom up. We start by defining points, which we will add it to VTK Points class, which is used for managing and storing 3D point coordinates. These points represent vertices in 3D space. Internally, VTK Points class uses an array-based data structure to efficiently store and manage point coordinates. This structure allows fast access, insertion, deletion, and modification of point data. Now, we create a VTK Points object named Points. Then, we use InsertNextPoint function to add points sequentially. Each call to InsertNextPoint function adds a new point to the end of the point list. VTK cell array stores the connectivity information for cells in a dataset. Cells can be points, lines, polygons, or other complex shapes, and their connectivity defines how the points are connected to form these shapes. Each cell type has specific connectivity requirements, and VTK cell array handles these variations. We can add cells to a VTK cell array using method insertNextCell. The insert cell point function in VTK cell array class is used to add a point index to the current cell being defined in the cell array. Now, to define the polygonal cell, we create a VTK cell array object named polygon. Using insert next cell method, we set the number of points of the polygon. Then, we add the index of the points, which we created earlier, to the cell array using insert cell point method. In this way we create the polygon object data structure. After creating the points and cell array, we add these data objects to VTK poly data class to create the poly data structure. We add points using set points method and add the polygon cell which we created to VTK poly data class by set polys method. We then create a mapper object from VTK poly data mapper class and pass the VTK poly data object to the mapper using set input data method of the mapper. Then, we create actor object using VTK actor class and set the mapper object for the actor. Now, we need to update our VTK viewer to display the actor. In the VTK viewer class, we define a function named addActor. In this function, we add the actor to the renderer using addActor method of the renderer. We also define the removeActor method to remove the actor from the renderer. Then, we pass our actor, which we created earlier to the VTK viewer for display. VTK property class is used to define visual properties for actors in a 3D scene. We can set the color of an actor using red, green, and blue components of the color. It allows us to specify material properties such as ambient, diffuse, and specular. We can set shading models like flat, gurode, and fong for the actors. Actors can have different representations like points, wireframe, surface, and volume. 
we can also control the visibility of an actor using set visibility method, and also set whether edges of the object are visible or hidden. Backface properties can be defined using set backface property method, allowing us to customize how the backfaces of an actor are rendered. VTK property is a versatile class that allows us to control the visual appearance and behavior of actors in VTK. Now, in our VTK viewer, we define a function named set representation to control the representation of the actor. It allows us to change how objects are visually represented in a 3D scene. It takes a parameter called a TYP, which specifies the type of representation we want for the objects. The function starts by counting the number of actors in the scene using get number of items method of the VTK actor class. Then, it iterates over each actor and adjusts its visual representation based on the ATYP parameter. To change the representation of the actor, we get the VTK property object from the actor using get property method and use the set representation method. Let's run this script. Now to change the color of the actor, we use setColor method, with its RGB parameters. The best place to set the color of the actor is when we create the actor, otherwise we will have to loop over all actors in the renderer, and then set color of the actor. Now, to set opacity of the actor, we can either set it when the actor is created, or set it for all actors in the renderer, using setOpacity method. A VTK Actor 2D is used for representing 2D graphical elements within a 3D scene. It is specifically designed for 2D elements, such as text, images, shapes, and annotations. We can specify the position of a VTK actor 2D using coordinates in pixel space or normalized viewport coordinates. This allows precise control over where the 2D element appears within the rendered window. One common use case is for rendering text overlays or annotations on top of 3D scenes. We can specify text content, font properties, alignment, and other text-related settings. It can be used to overlay multiple 2D elements on top of each other, or on top of 3D objects, allowing for complex graphical presentations. VTK Text Mapper class is used to render 2D text in a 3D scene. The text appearance can be customized using various text properties available in the mapper. These properties include font size, font family, color, alignment, boldness, italic style, and underline. Once the text content and properties are set, the mapper renders the text onto the screen or viewport. This rendered text can be displayed in a 2D overlay or embedded within a 3D scene. Now, we see a simple example to set the text at the bottom of the window. First, we create a text mapper, which is responsible for rendering the text. Next, we set the text content and styling for the mapper. Then, we set bold and italic style for the text. We set the font size of the text to 24 points. Then, we create an instance of the 2D actor, which will display our text. We set the mapper which we created earlier, to be used by the text actor. Finally, we specify the appearance and position of the text actor. 
For this, we use set coordinate system to normalize display method to position the text at the bottom left corner of the display. Let's run this script to see the window with the text. Please do like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated for our latest videos. Thank you.